Hey there, it's Ken coming to you from DYC Studios and today I'm going to be talking to you about a relatively new piece of software. It first came out on the iPad but soon after was launched on the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. Which makes me happy because I am a Wacom user and I get to use it now. So, what piece of software am I talking to you about? Well, I'm talking to you about Adobe Fresco. Now, I'm sure some of you have already heard about Adobe Fresco already, but for those who have not, let me tell you a little bit more about it. So Adobe Fresco is a digital painting application. So if you're interested in learning how to digitally paint, this is the tool for you. Uh, one thing that I really love about Adobe Fresco is the brushes and how they interact with each other on the canvas. You have very cool raster brushes and you also have live brushes which include watercolor and oil and just seeing how they interact and blend with each other on the canvas is absolutely beautiful. And then something true to my heart, you have vector style brushes. Now. Adobe Fresco is evolving and it is changing and growing so we're going to hopefully see more updates to the software. Now I think a lot of us non-iPad users are really looking for a solution to Procreate since we can't use it on our uh, Wacom devices. So this is a challenge for Adobe and yes I'm going to say it, I hope that you guys can make Adobe Fresco kick Procreate's ass. So. <laughs> Yeah, I said it, and I want it to happen. So uh, with that being said, let's dive in and check out Adobe Fresco. Okay, so now we're ready to use Adobe Fresco. I have it loaded up to the home screen, so let's check it out. So at the top of the page, we can see how we can create different sizes, uh, which is really cool. We can see what's coming to Fresco. We can see some of my recent work. I can go over here and click on Learn. And... There's all these kind of cool tutorials. So there's like a quick tour of Fresco. You can learn about brushes, layers, selections, masking, customizing uh, your workspace. And then you can kind of get to know Fresco a little bit better, create your first illustration, uh, learn how to select different parts of your illustration and move them around, uh, learn more about like painting with uh, oils and also playing with watercolors. So to me, that's really cool. Uh, you can see the cloud documents right here. So these are cloud documents that I've already worked on. Um, now I was really honored to have Wacom approach me and say, hey look, would you like to do a beta test of uh, Fresco? And I did. And so I worked with Adobe on that and answered a lot of questions to them as well. But uh, it was a lot of fun. The first uh, assignment that I had was to create an alien landscape. And so for this, I decided to create something fun, really test out the brushes, uh, even added a picture of my dog, a whippet named Rue, to the middle of it. And it was just really fun. So let me show you this. Takes a second for it to load because it's got a lot of layers. And the layers are all grouped, by the way. So uh, just to show you how many layers there are, let's kind of scroll through them. So as you can see, Fresco can really, really handle a lot of things. So right there is my dog. Let's hide him real quick. So that's what it would look like without him. And I think there's even a drop shadow that I made of him kind of light. You start to see like the different planets. Let's like click on this. And you can see I can easily move planets and change them and what have you. So this is was like really something that I really enjoyed doing because I was really able to experiment with like the textures and so forth like that and kind of experiment with the masking and learn how masking functioned in Fresco and it was really easy to learn if you've used things like Photoshop or any other application a lot of the tools are the same so it's not like you need to relearn everything all together everything Adobe is really good about this you learn something once and you kind of have the idea of how it goes um, so let's go back and it automatically saves, which is great. And here we have my borderlands. So with my second task, or well, it was actually the third task, uh, was to create something new. And because I tend to do a lot of character artwork, I decided to do something based on Borderlands 3, which is a brand new game from Gearbox Studios, of course, or sorry, Gearbox Software, of course, Borderlands has been around for a while, but I decided to work on Tina, uh, formerly known as Tiny Tina, if you know her from Borderlands 2. 
but uh, she's now a little bit older, so I thought I would do something like that. And the, what you're going to see is that I kind of work as a word reverse graffiti artist. I create the line art first, and then I create the color tones. So here is Tiny Tina. I'm going to hide the color. I'm going to hide the background. So this is the line art that I actually created. And then what I did was I duplicated the line art and filled it. Now, the one issue that I found with Fresco is kind of like Photoshop. If you're doing a fill, if you don't have your lines closed, it will spill out into other areas. So I cheated that with a little bit and was able to draw like little pieces of like uh, the same color for her skin or her hair where, as you can see, there's um, some gaps. So this way it wouldn't spill out. Uh, with Procreate, I know it knows how, or it's intuitive, so it can tell you, or it knows if you're doing a fill and it not to spill. Uh, so to me, that's something that if Fresco can add that to it, I think that'll be really great. Uh, now, what I would do if I wanted to take this image a little bit further, if I would have had more time, is in between the line art and the color art, right there I would add like shadows and highlights to it uh, and then I would mask anywhere that it you know goes outside the borders and so forth too um, so we're gonna click home and I just want to show you how easy this is to take into Photoshop because that's actually what I did alright let's open her up so right there you can see all the background now what I did was I created the background in Photoshop right there. Uh, let's go up, turn this off, turn this off. So basically using a gradient. And then I added these lines so it kind of had more of a manga feel to it. And then I created the shadow based on the drawing that I did in Fresco. And there you go, there's Tina. And turned out really cool. So let's close this, we don't have to save it. And as you can see, it's updated in, it updated in Fresco as well. So any changes that I make in Photoshop uh, or Fresco to a cloud document, it automatically changes so it's that seamless going back and forth which is really nice um, so hopefully when there's more features to fresco you won't have to go back and forth between the two uh, pieces of software but I think still having that ability to go back and forth between the two pieces of software is pretty amazing so again there's Tina really cool really try to you know kind of give her that kind of feel that you would see to like the Borderlands character and I hope I did a good job I hope you guys like it um, let's go back to the home space and let's go back right here so just to show you more like the tools of fresco um, let's hit custom size now here we have already have it up to digital so you can see some that are already built in like the current screen, the standard screen, widescreen, HD, 4K, 8K, web illustration with print. They already have like letterhead, postcard, large postcard, comic book, A4, tabloid, poster, A3, A2. Uh, I tend to like to create my own. So let's create something, you know, let's say six inches by six inches. And if it was a rectangle, I could do, uh, you know, landscape or portrait. Uh, with the pixel size, oops, let's do 300. Just that way we have a lot. And because I've old school, I've been using Photoshop since 1994. I tend to like the transparent background. I'm not so big into artboards, uh, or I like to hide my artboard when I do create them. So let's create this document. So brand new document, all ready to go. Um, First, let's try out the pixel brushes. And I guess in the intro, I accidentally said raster brushes, but pixel brushes is what I meant to say. Uh, we'll go to basic and we'll go to the hard round. 
and let's change the color something a little warm maybe an orange just so you can see and right here we can change the size of the brush the flow of the brush so the opacity one thing that I forgot to show we can hit the plus and it adds the swatch to thing we can also adjust the slider right here and also if you want to get more into your custom sliders you can do so so RGB or HSB so um, smoothing I like to have my smoothing set all the way up and there's still even more options if you want uh, your hardness your blend mode your shape dynamic so there's really a lot like your scattering and transfer so pretty much everything you think of is there now I normally work with a smudge glove but right now I'm barehanded so just bear with me so let's draw a line and a, just a curl now what's cool because this works similar to like what it would on an iPad or a uh, another like mobile device two tap it's gone three tap it comes back up yeah I know that the wheel popped up but that's because of my settings on the, my device anyways but again very cool very easy very fast and if I want to erase it using the same brush let me just hide my dial then I can just use this by holding this down and it automatically turns into an eraser and I'm using right now the uh, Wacom uh, Pro Pen 3D which is one of my favorites and another way to go back is just hit the arrows at the top so back forward back forward whatever um, so that's really cool uh, let's go into the live brushes now we have four watercolor brushes and four oil and I'm sure eventually they probably will come out with more as time goes on so we're gonna use the water wash flat and let's change this to kind of a, a nice green color kind of you know something very very earthy all right and you can just see how it goes really good on the and fills out now And just like watercolor, it gives it more of a, you know, lighter or darker. Now let's play around with just see how that dissolves into it, like it would be like real watercolor. I mean, that's really like working on a breath, uh, a canvas. That's and seeing, you know the water interact with each other and to me that's something that's really cool now I'm going fast so Now let's let's show you what masking can do because this is something that to me is really cool. So we're just gonna make like a little leaf right there, and we're gonna mask it. So now I, the cool thing about the masking is I can do like a red overlay, so you can see like the mask itself, or only the layers. And then if I'm happy with the mask, I can flatten it. So now it's completely flat. Uh, I can also adjust my layer opacity right here and change like the blend mode as well too. So you have all these different options. And right here you can actually rename everything. So let's call this leaf. 
So that's really cool. And then we can make it a little smaller. And also you can do, you know, your flip, horizontal or vertical. So hit done. And let's create a new layer, very simple. And go back. Let's change my brush just for fun, just so you can see. Go to oil. Let's go to detailed and make the size of the brush a little bit bigger. I think you have probably an idea of what I'm already doing. So Now I could play a little bit more and and so forth, but I'm just doing this really quickly just so you can kind of get an idea of what can be done. Now let's do this mask. Flatten the mask. And we'll move the apple here. Now, right now the apple's above it. Great thing is we can simply. Oh, we should be on. Whoops. Sorry. Adjust it. And create a new layer in between. Make a nice brown for the stem, something easy. And the brush size doesn't need to be so big. The flow, I don't want it transparent, so let's put it back up to here. And We can zoom in on that too. I just kind of love how you get that kind of a uh, texture to it when you're working with the oil paint. Okay, so now we've created this stem. Very cool, very easy, something fast, just so you guys can see. And maybe we want, maybe maybe the leaf needs to go behind the stem. Let's move it out a little bit more. Rotate it a little bit. Zoom back in. So now, really quickly, I painted an apple. And if I had really like, you know, spent time on it, I could probably do it a little bit better. Uh, so the other cool thing is we can group everything. 
And I can do this either by the by dragging with my finger or with the stylus or by doing what I just did there. And so now let's lock everything. So now it's locked and saved. Uh, now I just want to show you like uh, the vector brushes real quick. We're just going to use the same thing. Uh, we're going to switch back to whoops, black. And I'm just going to show you real quick how I kind of work. And so we're going to actually duplicate this layer. That was my mistake. And we're going to click the paintbrush. We're going to click a different color. Maybe this nice pink. And then what I'm going to do is create a second layer right here. We're going to go back into, let's go with the the pixel brush. Let's get out of basic. Let's go into comic. Let's give it a nice cross hatching. And now what's cool is we can mask that cross hatch. Okay, so pretty neat, right? So then we'll just click this and we'll flatten that. So really awesome. Now just to show you some other other pixel brushes just so you can kind of see. Uh, let's change some colors. Maybe a dark blue. Go up to this new layer. And you can see how each layer is known so you can see the marks for you know if it's if it's a uh, pixel based brush or if it's like a uh, what have you so here is the halftone layer and you can hit back they had different sizes of halftones this big one so I could add a halftone pattern you know, really Apple, if I wanted to look a little bit more comic-y, if I wanted, to me that would be kind of cool. So, you have a really lot of cool options and so forth too, and just to show you the color picker, so I can choose colors by just simply moving the color picker around, which is really nice, and I'm just doing that with my finger. And yeah, so pretty much this is like your main things that you see with uh, Fresco and how you can use it. And just to show you the settings, so I can rotate the canvas, I can do like my touch shortcuts, I can do whatever, I can rename the document right here. Whoops. And there you go. So this is Adobe Fresco and some basics to it. So learning how to digital paint, this is like a really cool app and you can really dive into it and really learn how to create some cool images. And once you master that, you pretty know all the concepts of digital painting, um, whether you wanna do it like, you know, like a traditional artist or paint like a comic book artist. Fresco has a lot of different options. So to me, diving into this app and really learning it can really get you ahead of the game. And as this app evolves, like I said, they are trying to add changes to it and 
like any Adobe software, if you make suggestions, you know, the more people that ask for a certain thing, the more likely that it's going to happen. So I really am excited to see how Fresco will evolve and how it will change. And yeah, it's a lot of fun and I hope you really enjoy learning it and testing it out. And let me know your feedback. Let me know what you thought about Fresco. Do you like it? What do you like the best? Uh, send me links to your creations. Let me take a look at them. I think it'd be a lot of fun to check out. Uh, so as always, I'm going to wrap this out by saying happy creating.